Um, so let me go ahead and get uh, started here. Um, I'm going to kind of uh, repeat a bit of the stuff that I did on Tuesday and then try and talk about the um, other tasks as well. Um, and there was one or two other things that I wanted to mention that I saw people. Um, I haven't quite got set up yet here, but um, and I probably only got about half an hour here, but um, so let me go ahead and get my stuff going here. So let's uh, change to my... Um, uh, dev box and get it up. Uh, and get into, let's just get into uh, our GitHub here. Oh, uh, let me open up my other browser. Um, all right, let's get to the repository. Um, Okay, looks like we're up now. All right. Um, so I, last time I had pretty much taken you through all the steps of um, of getting the initial repository up here. Let me, let me make certain everything's building and or get, getting the initial task completed here. The, the task one to get the insert back. Although I didn't show. Uh, put in the operate the overloaded operator, um, but um, let's make certain everything's still comp uh, compiling and running here from what I had last time. So, um, so everything compiling, but the tests um, are failing here. So um, let's see, the first one failing is on line 85. Right, so this is one thing I wanna talk about, but, but before I get to that, let me just kind of repeat a few of the things that I had said last time, okay? So, um, um, in this assignment, we're implementing, um, uh, we're using a linked list data structure to implement uh, a, a list like we've been doing before. Okay, so uh, in our previous assignments, you, we've been imp implementing a more general list. So a, con a container that can hold items um, and our container could kind of dynamically grow. Um, so, we, we, you know, you learned a little bit about memory management. So you, you were able to um, actually, you know, append items to our list and things like that. But all of our previous um, assignments where we've been creating a list, we've been using an array um, as the actual storage mechanism, right? So, so a fixed size array. And if we had to grow it, we were always, um, um, you know, dynamically allocating a new array and then copying all the values from the old one to the new one. So, so we dynamically create the new array that's bigger, big enough to, you know, sometimes we doubled it in size, sometimes we just made it uh, one item larger so we could get one more item of pending, that kind of thing. Right? But, but yeah, whenever we needed to grow, our list, uh, we had to, to direct, dynamically create a new block of memory, copy everything over from the old one to the new one, and then start using that new one, right? So, um, oh, and in our last assignment, uh, we also, you know, finally got up and looked at the idea of templates in C++. So templates is a bit of a um, advanced concept, but it's, it's used a lot in C++. It's used a lot in other languages, Java and things have, the same kind of idea. The basic idea being that, you know, um, we would like to build data structures that are containers for data, um, but it's it's really problematic if we have to have a separate copy of everyone for, for every type of data that we want to hold uh, inside of our container. You know, so if we're going to have a list to hold integers, we'd have to have one set of code for that, and then a list to hold uh, strings, another one, and so on, right? 
So that's where templates come in. So templates, I always think of as kind of like a, a big macro sort of system. So they allow you to um, specify a generic type T or, or you know, whatever. You don't have to use T, but, but uh, you give some symbol for, for the type that, that, that you want to use. And then you can um, create concrete instances from your template. So I can just create a list template that can hold variables of some type T. So it can hold values of some type T. And then I can create concrete uh, instances of that. So I can have lists of strings or lists of integers and things like that. Okay. So that, that was what templates was all about that we looked at last time, right? So in, in the current assignment, we're we're we're, we're still building a gen generic list, um, and we want the list to be able to that we can insert items onto the front and the back of it, and some some similar things that we've done before. But we're going to use uh, a linked list instead of an array um, as the structure behind the scenes in order to organize the items, keep track of the items that we have in the list, right? So that's what this is all about, okay? So uh, for this assignment, we're, we're also, we're using both templates and we're using object-oriented pro programming concepts, okay? So you'll see that there's, uh, there's quite a few files um, in this assignment. And when you do a build, um, lots of stuff has to be built and compiled together. Right, so there's there's a good six, eight, maybe more files that are actually being built and then linked together um, uh, in this one. So so these are all files for files for our testing, and then we have our our base class, um, and then we have the, the L list and the A list are really the you know, so L list is the link list based uh, implementation, which is what you're going to be. Um, working on in this assignment. Um, there's already an A list, which uses a lot of code that we had on the last assignment in previous assignments. So this is an array based implementation of the list here in the A list. So, um, and then there's a few other classes. So. Um, so that means, um, like we talked about last time, the you, you're not going to be really adding code to list.hpp or list.cpp, but you will be uncommoning a few things in, in list.hpp. So, so for, for the first task, the um, insert back and then the overloaded operator um, that we're going to be using for inserting on the back of these lists uh, was commented out. So you need to uncomment those. And then as I showed, um, um, what you want to do is uh, start by, so, so this is really the signature. I mean, th these are what are known as virtual um, functions and, and the list class here is an abstract base class, right? So um, these functions aren't actually implemented in list.cpp. So, so these are virtual functions, right? So these just define the, the functions that have to be implemented by any class that inherits or derives from this list class. So this list class is what's known as an abstract base class here, right? Um, and these virtual functions define kind of the interface. So anything that wants to be a concrete implementation of a list has to implement all these virtual functions um, and, and really should be implementing the ones that are commented out as well. So, so for your assignment, you're gonna in, end up uncommenting all of these and adding them um, into your uh, class basically, right? So um, what I showed then on Tuesday, for example, I, I got you started. So, you know, if, if you take uh, this, say, and copy it, I mean, that's the signature, except it's, you're not going to be a virtual function, um, but you're going to be putting this into your llist.hpp, right? So I've already got it in there. So I'll just show that again real quickly, right? So basically to implement list back, uh, you need to declare that I insert back. You need to declare that I've got a function called insert back that has exactly that signature. You don't need the virtual or the equal zero, right? So that's that's your signature, right? So in this case, insert back takes a, a value of some generic type T. So, so this class is starting off uh, as a template class already, right? So, so we take some, some type T um, that's been templatized here, and we return a reference to ourself. Okay, so this is this is the same as what you did uh, in the previous assignment for overloading the operator. So this allows us to chain together multiple calls to the overloaded um, uh, insert back operator here, right? Or insert items on the back, right? So the the whole purpose of the insert back then um, is um, so we can look 
into the insert.cpp and find the insert back here. Um, so I actually gave you the implementation for this on Tuesday. Um, so you know, I'll, I'll briefly show it here, but you should go back and, and watch on Tuesday if, if you're struggling to get the insert back up um, and want some hints on there. So, you know, we are using a linked list, okay? So, um, so, so we have the same signature, a couple of things to watch out. So for all these methods, you're gonna be adding them into it. Uh, they're all members of the list, L list class, templatized on type T. So you have to have the L list T colon colon in front of each of your member functions that you're adding here, including the overloaded operator. Um, and it also needs to be a, a template class, okay? So I had actually forgotten both of those on Tuesday when I did this, right? So, <laughs> so it's, it's, I mean, it's a template member function in this case, okay? So, so you, you need the kind of boilerplate um, syntax here so that we know that this is templatized on the type T here, right? Um, and then since we're returning a reference to a list uh, like you did for the previous assignment, you're just gonna, be returning um, the dereference pointer to this. So, so that will return the, the appropriate reference that we need in order to chain these together, okay? And then, but, but the implementation of this, so we're not using an array. So uh, if, you, if you look at the list, um, um, and, and you should you need to watch the materials for this week about linked lists here, but uh, our linked list implementation keeps track of the front and back node of, of a linked list of nodes, okay? That, so that's gonna be how we um, uh, maintain the values that are currently on the list, okay? There's also a size, but, but size is given to you in the base class. So, so the, the, the size of the list you also have to maintain, uh, but that variable um, is uh, declared as a protected variable in the, um, uh, in, in the abstract base class, the, the list.hpp file, all right? So, um, and, and, and the, these are pointers to the node type. Okay, so the, the, the node is another uh, object in class um, in this assignment here. Node is just a simple structure. Okay, so again, like in our materials about linked list this week, uh, we just dynamically create instances of these nodes. So these nodes basically just have two member items in it. So it has the value. So, so, so every value that we want to keep on the, the list, we have to create a node in order to remember the value, that value that has been put onto the list and that we're maintaining on the list. Uh, and then for this to be a linked list, we have to have a pointer to the next node in the linked list. Okay, so we're only doing a singly linked list in this case. So, um, so in order to access the values in our list, we have to start at the front node and then follow the, the next pointers to each node in order to do things like searching for a value um, or uh, finding, you know, removing a value somewhere from the middle, things like that, right? From this link list, okay. So that means coming back to the insert back, um, what you need to do is, so when you're inserting a new node onto the back of your list, uh, you need to create, or you're inserting a new value to the back of the list. So, so to do that, we have to create a new node to add to our linked list data structure, right? So, so we start by creating a new node. We, we, we set the value uh, member item of the new node to be this value that's passed in. And we set next to be null pointer because this new node is going to be the end of our linked list here. So the last node, the back node, always has to have its next be pointing to null. So that if you iterate through here, you know that you've gotten to the end of the list by when, when the next pointer is null here. Okay? So that's, that's a common way that we iterate, iterate through a linked list like this. Right? Um, and then once you create the node, there, there's kind of two cases. So either the list is currently empty. So if the list is currently empty, this new node is going to become the front and the back. Right? So there's only one node and it's both the front and the back of the list. Right? Otherwise, if the list isn't empty, we want to just add it to be the new back node. So we set the current backs next to be pointing to this new node. So it'll become the new back node. And then we reset back now to be pointing to the new node there. So that's all you need to do to insert this onto the back of the link list is those types of things. We have to increase the size. And as I talked about, this is a little bit of a crufty thing here, but um, uh, but yeah, both for, if you want to access call a member function or access a member variable that's defined in the base class, so you normally don't have to do this if you're just doing regular inheritance, but if you're inheriting from a template class for various reasons in C++, uh, you have to specify, you know, it's, it's a little bit ambiguous for template classes. Um, so anyway, you have to put this on the front or equivalently you can use um, C++ 
say this, which points to size. So that would also um, disambiguate which size that you mean here. Um, all right. So I, I discussed the reason for that in a little bit more detail last Thursday, but, but that's basically invitation for an insert back, right? And then uh, I guess I did give the overloaded operator. So for the overloaded operator, it's exactly the same signature. It's just, um, you know, so it's, it's, it's a, it's a member function of the L list templatized on type T. So we have the LST colon colon in front of the name of the function. And we've also got the template boilerplate in front of that, but otherwise it's an, uh, an overloaded operator. And like we did on the previous assignment, uh, you know, you shouldn't, you know, don't repeat yourself. So you, sh uh, you shouldn't be redoing the same code. You should be reusing the insert back here, right? And since insert back is returning a reference that you need, you can just return what insert back gives you um, as, as the result, right? So um, one thing that I forgot to mention last time, so uh, when you do this um, and you compile and you run the tests, um, um, not quite all of the, the tests will be passing. So the first failing one that I'm having is on line 85 here in the test L list. So if you go look at that, um, it happens here uh, after we use the constructor that takes in an array. So after we have a constructor that takes an array, the, the, the size of this list here should be five, right? But it's coming back as zero. Um, that's because uh, there was one more thing. So after you get the insert back working, um, you have to go to the, the constructor here that um, takes in a, an array of values and the size. And there's something not coming out. So this had to be commented out until you'd actually implemented the insert back, right? But you need to uncomment that to get that uh, to work correctly, right? Um, and there might be, let me think. So there might be another, another place. Let's search for um, uh, calls to insert back. All right, so that, that one in the constructor, you need to uncomment. Um, and then there's another one in um, the constructor from a list, right? So, um, um, so, so you have to, I think that's the only two, but in both of these constructors, um, 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 we're, we're reusing the insert back, but, but we couldn't reuse it until you'd actually implemented it, right? So you do need to uncomment uh, both of those, okay? and then it will reuse your function. So. All right, if you do that, that should probably allow the test to pass. So let's try recompiling. And, and you do, do be patient here. So if you do a clean build, you know, make certain that everything rebuilds you know, and you get back your terminal before you try to run the test or you'll get a little bit of some weirdness, right? So, uh, oh yeah, so yeah, if you do that, that should allow you to actually be passing all of the uh, task one tests. Right, so, so at this point, I think we're ready for task two then, all right? Um, all right, so like I said, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna give any more, but um, I'm just gonna discuss a little bit the, the, the remaining tasks here. So there's five tasks in total. Um, so, um, um, so the next one is to implement a get front and a get back. All right, so these are just accessor methods, so they ought to be constant. Uh, but, but again, in this case, uh, you can get the signatures from all of these from the, the, the base class file, okay? So you should start off by um, looking in your base class um, for task two. So there should be um, a commented out get front and get back, right? Um, so you might, might want to do these one at a time, but, but you'll want these two things, right? Uh, but but then yeah, this is the signature. So uh, again, signature except it's not going to be a virtual function when you implement it. So you're not going to have the virtual in front or the equal zero in the back. But otherwise, it, it returns a T, um, and it's a constant member function. Get front and back. And as the name implies, get front 
She'd just return the item in the front node and get back, she'd return the item at the back of the list or the back node. So these should be relatively straightforward. You, you've got um, in your L list, you've got the pointers to the front and the back. So all you have to do is access and return that particular value that's asked for um, on those two. Um, implement the get front and the get back, right? Um, Uh, oh, there's one wrinkle. So um, it is an error to try and get front and back on an empty list. So before you try to access and return the value, because if, if the list is empty, then front and back would be pointing to null. And if you tried to dereference those, your program would crash, right? So here we're being defensive by, um, you should first check if the list is empty. And again, you know, use the is empty. So, so, so I consider it incorrect if you do something by hand to check if the list is empty, like, like check the size. You should be calling the is empty function um, like I gave you um, on the insert back, right? But yeah, if the list is empty um, and you can check it like that, um, you should throw, um, the, the list empty exception, uh, like with drawn exception for work. Otherwise, then, then there's there's at least one item, so it's safe to get the front or the back, right? So even if, even if there's only one item, it's both the front and the back. So you, you can get it as the front item or get it as the back item for one item. And if there's more than one item, of course, the front and the back would be different. So. Um, all right, and then for task three, uh, we're gonna implement the insert front. Uh, and overload the um, this operator to do insertions on the front. Okay, so so again, you know, when you're ready to start task three, you'd want to start by uncommenting the uh, the API in the base class for these, and then you can copy these over for the um, signatures. Although the signature here should be identical to the signature for the insert back, right? Now the function isn't quite the same. So for the insert front, it, it's pretty similar to insert back, right? So you first start off by creating a new node and sticking the value in that new node. But in this case, you want to make it the new front of the list instead of the back of the list. So in that case, you want to make uh, the, the, the next pointer for the new node you create to be pointing to the front node. And then you want to repoint front to this new node that you create, right? So that's all the insert front um, is doing there. Um, oh, yeah, and, and kind of like for the insert back, there is also kind of really two cases. So if, if it's empty, uh, if you're inserting front, you'll be doing the same thing as when you insert it on the back. It, the, it, it just becomes the one and only node, and both front and back would point to it. But if it's not empty, you do what I was just saying. So you point the next to the, uh, of the new node that you created to the current front item, um, and then repoint front to be pointing to your new node. Okay. All right. Um, all right, and then the last two are going to be the most difficult. Um, so, 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 so these take some thought. So, so delete index. Uh, basically, um, um, you need to delete an item at a particular location in the list. So that involves first you have to search through the list till you get to that location, and then you have to do some linked list manipulation to remove that item. And and you should. Um, um, you should make certain that you correctly deallocate that node, right? So, so once you've gotten the node out of the linked list, um, uh, perform a delete on the node that you pulled out, right? So I give some some um, idea of the pseudocode here of the steps that you want to do, right? So, um, so yeah, I mean you should first be checking that that the item that the index that's being requested to be deleted um, is actually in the list, right? So if the list is of size three. The only valid indexes are zero, one, and two. So we are using zero-based indexing here, right? So if you, if you ask to delete the index zero, that's deleting the front item, right? And if the list is of size three, you can delete up to index two, um, which is valid. That that's equivalent to deleting the the last node, removing the last node from the list, right? Um, but uh, if size is negative or if size is greater than or equal to, uh, if the index is negative or the index is greater than or equal to 
the size, and we should throw the list memory bound again. So if, if the index is zero, then you're deleting the front node. So that's that's a really relatively simple case. So, so you should do this by doing the spec the, the particular cases like I'm talking about here, right? So so if it's the front node that you're removing, um, um, there's already a delete front given for you um, in the um, implementation of um, the L list, there's a, a delete front and a delete back, right? So you can just reuse, reuse delete front. Um, um, likewise, um, if it's the last node, so if the index is equal to you know size minus one, uh, you can just reuse the delete back node, right? Uh, otherwise, so, so this is the, 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 the complex case. So otherwise, it's somewhere in the middle. So you have to search through it. Um, so this is where you know we had examples of, of iterating through a linked list. So you have to start at the front node and iterate until basically you've got a pointer to the node that you want to remove. Um, so I mean, there's a couple of strategies you can do for this. I think I gave some examples of things like this, removing nodes from the middle of a linked list. So um, a particular common one is actually to iterate to the node before the node you want to remove. So if, if you have a pointer to the node before the one you want to remove, um, you can then point that node's next to be pointing to the node after the node you want to remove, right? Because you've got the node before the one you want to remove, you've, and then you've got a pointer to the one you want to remove. And then from that one, you've got a pointer to the node after it, right? So you can use that information to, to repoint the node before the one you want to remove to the node immediately after the one. So once you've done that, you've, you've successfully uh, extracted the node out of the list. Um, so when you do that, though, make certain you keep track of that node that you actually want to delete, right? So, so after you after you kind of removed it from the linked list, then you can call delete um, on the node. So, so I gave. Um, Um, from hints on how to do that, right? So, um, and then finally, um, there's a delete value. Okay, so the difference between delete index and delete value is that for delete value, you're going to be searching for a particular value uh, and removing that value from the, the from your list here. Okay, um, and in this case, we're not going to really handle duplicate values, so you should you should always just delete the first value that you find, right? So, um, or did I have that wrong? Um, oh, um, yeah, so I made it a little bit more involved. So, so you're supposed to actually delete all the nodes with the indicated value, right? So, so it is possible that uh, once you find a value, you're not done. So that there might be multiple duplicates of a particular values. So you have to search through the whole list, removing any values that you find, okay? Um, so yeah, so, so uh, the suggested solution here is uh, first just keep removing any removing no nodes from the front as long as the front value is equal to the value that you're trying to remove, right? Then next, do the same for uh, any back nodes, right? Um, so in that case, you can reuse the delete back, right? So so basically, you check if the back node's value is equal to the value that you want to remove. If it is, you delete back. Once you do that, back is going to be repointed to the new uh, back of the list here. Um, so, so you can kind of have another loop here um, that um, uh, keeps you moving. So once you get past both of those, you know that if there's any node remaining, so, so if the list is not empty at that point, um, the, the front and the back node can't be the value, but there could be some nodes uh, in between the front and the back that also need to be removed, that, that, that have the value that you want to remove. So at that point, you have to have a loop that you go through there, um, similar to the index. So, so you might want to do it by having a loop that starts, at, um, that keeps track of the node before the node where you find the value, right? So, so if you know the node before the node that has the value you want to remove, you can do kind of a similar thing like we were talking about for delete index. And you can kind of get that value out uh, and repoint your list. And then you can keep iterating from that point um, on, right? So. All right. Um, yeah, so that's all I kind of wanted to um,
um, uh, talk about here. So I'll go ahead and post this. Um, as usual, I had a couple of people asking questions on the assignment already. So um, go ahead and keep uh, sending email for questions. Um, and, and yeah, I'll see you guys later then.